This is my follow-up video to my 10K trading bot video. I've had a few questions come in, as well as a couple people try to offer me money to build them a bot. I think it's better that I just start making content and uh, show how I'm using these bots. <laughs> I don't really want to take on the risk of your money, at least not at this point. I don't want to pretend that I uh, know too much about what I'm doing. So let's elaborate. Um, a lot of the ideas I'm going to put forth here come from a bubble, me. I haven't really taken any formal trading classes. I've just kind of broken things down the way I see them. I kind of approach everything this way, um, so maybe it'll help some of you. Let's uh, reiterate that I'm not offering financial advice. I'm not a financial ex expert. I'm just sharing what works for me. In this video, I'm going to go full elementary mode. Um, one, because that's kind of where I am, too, even though I am getting great results. Um, I'm not going to get into candlestick charts or anything like that yet. I'm only just now learning about that myself. Uh, very, very interesting stuff, but we're going to keep it simple. And I'm just going to have very basic graphs, um, very simple visuals to get an idea um, of how you might want to set up your bot and how you would change settings when the market changes conditions. So... I made this little graphic. This is pretty much what everyone wants, which is we want some volatility because that's how we make money, but we want it to be predictable. Unfortunately, that's just not the reality. The reality is a little bit more like this. So let's get into how you would best set up your bot to kind of control for some of these uh, fluctuations and dips, things like that. There are four different types of market conditions when examining price action. Bull market, which is just a general upward trend. Then we've got a bear market, which is a general downward trend. And when I say uh, general downward trend or general upward, I mean sustained over a, a period of time that justifies calling it a new market, whether that's a, a week, two weeks, you know, just because it falls for a day or two doesn't necessarily mean you've entered a totally new market condition, so be careful there. But it is important to understand that you have upward action, downward action, then we have flat action, where the price is relatively stable. Um, some people call this sideways or horizontal action, just meaning that over time it doesn't shoot up or down. Uh, it remains relatively flat. Then we have volatile action. And easy to see, price bouncing around all over the place. I use Martingale bots. Um, I'm having the best results with them. Uh, a Martingale is a kind of method where it does a descending buy-in, so it anticipates there being a small dip. It needs there to be some volatile price swing to really net you bigger profits, but it will incrementally buy in with increased amounts uh, at different intervals until it loads up your full balance and then it sells all at once and this is different than spot grids or infinity grids or some of the other bots that will issue multiple buy sell orders all over the place and really a martingale is like an all at once sell order so i like this because i can take bigger profits and the way i'm doing it i'm just earning more money this way than i have with any of the other bots i've tested so that's why i'm sticking with the martingale other people might have better results with other things. Each market condition works better with different bot settings. So if the market is flat for a while, and we just experienced that like a week ago, that's where I kind of squeeze my settings. And I'll show you uh, specifically in the app what I mean, but basically, let me, well, let me fast forward a little bit. So here's my bot settings, and here's what I mean by squeezing them. The default is 1% uh, for your position increase, meaning every time the price drops by 1%, it's going to buy more and it will increase your position. You have max increases 7, means it's going to buy a maximum of 7 times, and then the multiplier is 1.5, so it's going to increase by 1.5 times until it reaches your full balance. 
If you change this number right here, it might not be obvious, but let's say you do two. I did that at first thinking, oh, well, I wanted to double my balance. Actually, that makes the first initial buy-ins much smaller because mathematically, if it's having to double every time to get to seven, the first few buys are not even worth your time. So I leave it at 1.5. I don't really go lower, but some people do. And then I have uh, take profit percentage default as one. So these are the settings right here that are the default. And in general, they're, they're less risky. They distribute your risk over seven buys. So that's a total of 7% drop. And then it's going to buy all at once. Um, I modify these settings. Like say right here, this would be for, I would say if I expect it to, to decline a little bit, like over the weekend lately, we've been dropping by a good 10% as we go into the weekend. So I will actually switch my bot over to something more like this, the default setting, because I'm anticipating it needing to drop and actually get into my full position. And then on Monday or whenever the, the market starts to rise again, it will eventually hit the sell point or I'll nudge it by stopping the bot when I get to the profit that I want. As I described in my previous video, link in the description if you haven't seen it yet. So when I say squeeze my settings, what I do here when the market is flatter, I actually change my settings to be smaller. So when the market is flatter, I might go with something more like 0 0.3 and instead of 1%, 0 0.6, something like that. And that has the effect of squeezing the range at which I'm trading to accommodate the smaller fluctuations that are happening. When I expect a drop to happen, or if it's just generally more volatile, I will leave these settings, and sometimes I might even expand further. Uh, I might increase to nine buys, or I might want to buy in uh, slower. So like if I'm expecting the market to dip significantly, I might even set this to 2%, where it's not going to do buy-ins until it falls 2%, 2%. Um, how would I anticipate this? Lots of different factors, not really for this video, but sometimes when you know something's coming, it's best to adjust your settings accordingly. So if the market is volatile, this is what it looks like. I've got my cascading buy-in, and here, let me show you. Sorry, I'm kind of going all out of whack here, but this is what it looks like in practice when your bot's running. So this particular bot, it has made its first purchase and now the price looks like it's on its way down and if it continues to fall it's going to buy right here at 644 if it continues to fall it does another buy-in and each different buy-in is increasing my position and buying more and the last buy will invest your full balance that way the biggest part of the dip when it swings back up to do your sell you'll make more money that way that's why I use the Martingale bot. Every other bot kind of does this incremental game where you, you make a bunch of little cells here and there and it adds up over time. Um, but you kind of have to know what you're doing a little bit more with those other bots. Um, I've stayed in the red with a lot of them. Martingale, I'm consistently up and consistently winning. They say it's riskier, but I think it might be the way I'm playing it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so next, so do you understand these concepts? Go ahead and comment below if you don't. Let me know. I'd like to chat. Um, you squeeze your settings when you have flat action, and you expand them when you have more volatile action. Very basic, which just means changing these percentages. Squeezing them is changing them to a smaller increment because you are literally trying to squeeze the buy and sells within a smaller range or expanding them when it's more volatile. Next, what happens when the price does this? What happens when you're good and it's buying and it's trading and all of a sudden it dips and now your bot's in the red? Well, what's going to happen is the bot is stuck, unable to execute any sales until the price swings back up to the sell order price. Or if you set a stop loss, it will reach your accepted toleration or accepted tolerance of loss and then you will sell out. Um, I set mine to about 10%, but it just totally depends on the currency. Like with my ETH bots, I don't even really set one. That's just me. I kind of have a, a foolish faith that Ethereum is just going to continue to, to grow market share wise over the years. But that's me. Some people have the same uh, confidence in Bitcoin. Looks to be true. You could run this same bot on a, a Bitcoin uh, 
run a Bitcoin bot. My speech is a bit challenged this morning. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee. Anyway, I do recommend a stop loss if you're inexperienced or uh, if you don't have the kind of confidence I do where it's like, you know, I'm betting a lot that Ethereum or Bitcoin are going to be around for a while. I would not do these kind of maneuvers on any coin that I wasn't sure of the future of. Be that Polkadot, Matic. There's lots of coins that people are really behind and they have a great presence. I would never run a bot without a stop loss on them, just in case. Um, and even with Bitcoin, you can lose money if you're looking at it from a dollar perspective. I'm somebody that's been holding cryptocurrency for a while. It's a completely different game. My stop loss default is 10%, meaning if I invest 1000 the price actually drops and the value is 900 The bot will close, sell out, and then I can restart it. Um, I sometimes will do this if I'm going away for a weekend and I don't want to worry with dipping too far into the red if that happens. Like if I'm not going to be able to babysit my bots and I'm going to have to be away, then I will put out a stop loss uh, and I do that just so as soon as I get back with my bot and get back in action, I can usually recoup that 10% um, within half a month, sometimes less than that. So if the bot is stuck in the red for two days straight, that's when I take the loss and start it again. It's just more profitable uh, over time doing it that way. Sometimes you'll be in the red for weeks. Sometimes it won't return to the same price range. And if you wait too long, you're just missing the opportunity for trading. It's the way that I look at it. So we've talked about what happens when the bot goes into the red, when it starts dipping below the price range when you're in, but what happens when it does the opposite? I call this the limbo zone. Your bot can still end up stuck if it goes to its maximum sell order, it sells out of your position, and now it's waiting for a dip before it does another buy but it doesn't dip. Now it just keeps on going up and now the market exists in a different price range and your bot is stuck for a whole new reason. It's profitable, it's in the green, but it's not going to get any more profit because it has nowhere to swing. This is another situation where you're going to want to stop your bot, restart it in its current price position. So just so you know, this is more like what you expect in the market. Um, when you zoom out a little bit and you look over the course of weeks and months, you see that there will be different kind of price plateaus that happen. And when it shoots up, it reaches another level. It kind of spikes up for a while. Actually, the more realistic view would be oh, a much bigger spike or something like that. This is really bad graphics on my part because the way it usually looks is a big spike up on the front of all of these followed by a plateau and it reaches a different plateau and then it sinks and then it has another plateau and what I really want you to see in this graphic is for each of these different relative plateaus I will have stopped my bot and restarted it so that it can function within that new price fluctuation range and if I feel like I'm gonna miss a big swing upward like let's say it's going upward and it just keeps going up and my bot is stuck sometimes I will close the bot and then I immediately buy the coin and then I just hold it and I ride that wave. If, you know, if Ethereum is going into a whole different range and I'm sitting there watching through the day and it's like 2,000, 2,100, 2,200, 2,300, the smartest thing to do there is not to enable your bot but to just buy the coin, hold it, wait till you um, either find the price you want to sell at or set a limit order. Um, so I've done that a few times now and ended up with cool things. Like I, when I do that, I buy myself something. Probably not the smartest maneuver. I'd have a lot more money now if I didn't have uh, the guitars I wanted, but you know what I'm saying. So that's it. That's the basics of how to adjust these bots uh, to give you a brief summary at the end of the video. Uh, different price fluctuations, you will squeeze or expand the bot settings, and then you stop and restart the bot in different price ranges. Um, one day, hopefully there will be a platform or I will be able to code something that automatically does that for me, but right now I don't have it. If you do have something like that, man, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to learn about it. I hope this helps anyone and uh, onward and upward, fellas, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between. Peace.